Hi, I'm Samika. I am a South Asian American artist. I sing, write, all the things. And you are listening to Trust Me, I Know What I'm Doing. Yeah. My name is Abhay Dandekar, and I share conversations with talented and interesting individuals linked to the global Indian and South Asian community. It's informal and informative, adding insights to our evolving cultural expressions, where each person can proudly say, trust me, I know what I'm doing. Hi, everyone. And on this episode of Trust Me, I Know What I'm Doing, a conversation with musician and artist Samika. Stay tuned. You know, I really can't say it enough times, so I'll say it once again. Thank you so much for listening to this and sharing it with your friends and family, for rating and reviewing it wherever you're listening, and for following Trust Me, I Know What I'm Doing on all the social media spots. So it feels like much of the art we consume is, in a way, like reading a thoughtful and lingering letter that someone is sharing as a mode of their expression. Like when a movie or a painting harness a host of emotions, or maybe a novel or play tell us a story that motivates us or tugs at a hidden memory thread. And like for so many others, for me, music and song capture the essence of a vibe or a time in my life, like last summer or any Monday morning, or maybe even help to shape the soundtrack of right now. One thing that I really like is music that in a sense is charming in that it has a lot of versatility and intentional crossroads and the surprising blends that generate interest and connection and conversation. And that's certainly how I found myself listening to the music of Samika and her new EP, Laurel Canyon. Samika is a South Asian American who grew up around art in a musical house where both of her grandmothers were singers and her mom was a classical Kathak dancer. With a true love for painting and surrounded by music, she began songwriting pretty early and found her way to the music platforms of today online and through TikTok. Her sound is a super tasty kitsuri of country, pop, R&B, soul, folk, alternative, with sometimes a Hindi filmy style making its way through. Some of her influences range from Dolly Parton to Amy Winehouse to Bob Dylan and Stevie Nicks. So Samika lives in LA now, and her early cover songs have developed into compelling songwriting and more complex musical work that starts on her guitar and ends with a great sing-along for those streaming and watching her perform live. I listened to her latest work, the EP Laurel Canyon, and to me, it kind of embodies a version of the ups and downs of a Los Angeles love letter, being bold and daring, dealing with heartbreak, and following along with a catchy tune that you find yourself unknowingly humming the next day. She's also been spending a lot of time in Nashville recently, so when we caught up to chat, I wanted to find out what kind of mood or temperature her own musical playlist was offering her lately. Um, I definitely switch it up. I think Spotify and Apple Music help with that. And um, But yeah, I'm kind of like all over the place when it comes to <laughs> listening to music. I just, I love all the old, um, like a lot of old country music, like classics, like Dolly Parton. Yeah. Um, I love like the Stevie Nicks vibe of LA, um, Fleetwood Mac, a lot of like recent artists like Casey Musgrave. So it just like jumps around from different decades and I love, but I love it all. I know you mentioned that you had a, a, a project in Nashville recently and, you know, yeah. uh, certainly there's so much history and heritage um, in Nashville. Yeah. You know, was it interesting to sort of blend your own kind of backdrop with the rich kind of, you know, musical culture of Nashville oh, on yeah. this trip? It was, it was really cool. I've been wanting to go to Nashville for so long. I just didn't know anybody there. And um, thankfully, through the power of social media, I messaged <laughs> like a bunch of people and I, I found this one guy um, who is such a good friend now and his name is Ross and I just messaged him, like cold messaged him and was like, hey, this is my song. I don't know if you like it, but like, do you want to work? And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm actually in Nashville. And I was like, oh, perfect. I already know that. But <laughs> it's amazing that it still works like that, that like, I know. You know and it's crazy. Yeah, I was I was really lucky that he was the one um, who like responded the, or one of the people that responded because his music was so good and it was so aligned with what I had been trying to do in L.A. Yeah, that it was kind of hard to find the right producer in L.A. But yep. 
um, he just, yeah, he, he crushed it. So. And is there something, you know, we just talked about like mood and temperature and blends. And is there something mm -hmm. about that kind of culture of Nashville that lends itself to, you know, a different creativity than being in Los Angeles? Yeah, I think because I play guitar and a lot of my, well, all of my songs, I actually write on the guitar. So I yeah. had the songs written out and then I went there and kind of gave it to him to kind of mess with it. And we come up with the production together. Um, but yeah, it just helped. It, it felt like it was part of the sound there. You know, it's like mm -hmm. such a culture of just live music and live acoustic music. I ended up going to a few shows and it was really cool. It's very different than LA, but it was a nice little break from LA and to see something different. Does it help you to innovate in different ways, especially listening to that music and listening to it live and thinking a little bit about like how now it integrates into, into your own style? Yeah, I definitely think that it was very reassuring that people actually listen to that kind of music because <laughs> at least like being Indian, I have been told so many times, like, we should make a dance song. Like you should add right. this, add this beat, like blah, blah, blah. You know, you need a wedding number. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, you guys, <laughs> like it's hard enough to write songs. Like I, I can't like, I'm not going to force this like Bollywood number, you know? Right, right. So it was that way. It was kind of cool to see uh, a lot of people doing like very similar stuff in their own unique way. And yeah, and it was just, it was nice to, and I just love that kind of music. So it was really fun. You know, you, you think about like sort of, right. You have a lot of people, you know, pushing you to say, Hey, you should get this sort of dance beat or Bollywood beat into the music. Yeah. And, <laughs> and yet when you're in Nashville and you're around people in the, particularly in the country music industry, um, are they surprised? about who you are and do they oh, often yeah. have this you know sort of the reverse mirror reaction of like well you should get a little bit of this going in the bollywood style you know yeah 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 i mean just being in the city itself there were i i definitely had moments where i was like oh i am the only brown person yeah. here in right. this room and you know you can like feel it but i was really lucky everybody was so nice um yeah but yeah i think in the music side it was uh, it was definitely like a little, oh, this is surprising, you know, because I, I also try to blend the two in yeah. a very authentic way. I definitely don't want anything to come off as like gimmicky or anything that if I feel like it, it would be nice to add a little Hindi or like a little Indian melody here, then I do it. But otherwise, I'm not, you know, trying to force yeah. it. But but yeah, it was it's funny to see like both sides. I feel like it's just fun to surprise people and yeah it's just a good thing you know and and especially like given it's it's hard to sometimes label music and in some type in some ways it's almost unfair to, to label music but totally do you feel like it's important to be a indian american or south asian american or for that matter mm -hmm. indian country artist or pop country artist or you know mm -hmm. country folk artist who happens to be indian i mean are, are those labels important to you or do they just happen um... to be kind of matter of fact that uh you know of who you are i do think the label part is very boxing yeah. in a way if that makes sense um i wouldn't say that i'm like fully a country artist or fully a pop artist you know i think i love different types of music and i just tend to write all my songs on the guitar alone and um it just translates really well to kind of like a live music sound and I love playing live. I think that's yeah. the most fun part of the whole thing that I do. And um, it's really nice to be able to translate those songs to an audience. So it just kind of like naturally happened that I just gravitated towards that recently, but mm. I have no idea, you know, tomorrow <laughs> maybe I'll start making like, I don't know, drum and bass music. I have no idea. I just am going with the flow and this is just what, is coming out right now and I kind of love it. So uh, Samika, the thrash metal hip hop artist or exactly. Okay. All Just right. Like drop a screamo album. There you, go. <laughs> you know, I, I'm always struck by different artistic venues and vehicles and kind of what they offer to the artist. So, so I'm curious whether music for you offers sort of a sanctuary and almost like a private retreat or, or rather an open space to kind of create and have sort of an artistic picnic 
you know, with mm-hmm. collaborators and stuff, or, or perhaps both? Mm-hmm. Um, I think, like, for me, I am definitely the kind of person that if I don't create something, whether it be music or I paint as well, or just something artistic, I tend to fall into just so much unhappiness. And yeah. I know a lot of people use music as kind of a therapy, but for me, I if I don't do it, then I would need therapy. You know, yeah. If that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Totally. Um, it's just like my innate being to have to create something. Right. Um, and the hardest part for me wasn't really the create part. It was more of putting it out and sharing a lot of things mm. that I think and my feelings and if it was even a good song or whatever. Um, that was kind of the thing that I had to overcome. Um, being on stage was something I had to overcome. But just a general creative process was definitely a nice, um, it's a nice thing to do. It's the only thing I can do, really. Yeah. Well, does it, does it feel like it's kind of naturally your platform for expression? Or is it, is, does it ever feel like an escape, you know, some place where you can find, again, more sanctuary um, from all the other stuff that you have to deal with? It's definitely, yeah, just it comes, it's my only thing. So it's not even like yeah. I'm trying to escape life to make music. Yeah. I My life is making music, sure. if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, it's not really like in my busy day that I'm now like I need to write about it. It's more right. like I get up and I'm like, okay, here the is. melody is coming. Like <laughs> I have to get it right now. There's been times that like I'm literally sleeping and I yeah. wake up in the middle of the night and I have like songs in my dreams and I record them or you know it's like it's so I don't know how to describe it but it's just like me <laughs> yeah so and it and yeah. it, I imagine that it just sort of feels so natural and and I'm I'm also imagining that like many people right it's like boy if I could only remember that one melody that I have oh my, in my gosh head, yeah I, that's the worst but yeah. but if you don't remember it then it was meant to be I have a very I, I, you have to have like a mentality of like, okay, it's like their good ideas are always going to come. You just have sure. to be in the moment to capture it. And otherwise you can't harp on like, oh no, I, that was the best song I ever wrote. Now I'm never going to write a good song again. You know, it's not have like you, that. Have you, you know, has that kind of patience with that taken some practice and some learning? Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. I, if you asked me this, like three, four years ago, it would have been a totally different answer. I mean, yeah. I have definitely put in the work I say to actually have this thinking and this uh, approach to how I write now. Um, But it was, it's really hard. I mean, you know, when you first start, it's super, super hard and you just really have to kind of switch the mindset. Um, And when that, when it all clicks, you're like, Oh, that's what it was. I get it now. So, (laughs) You, you know, I read that you're, you know, sort of one description of your work has been sort of pop country folk with an organic and alternative sort of feel Mm -hmm. and and with that sort of description i'm curious what what is it actually like in 2023 for someone with an indian background in again a very very american genre of art Mm -hmm. um for me it's i feel like now our community is very lucky and because I think a lot of doors are opening now than previous generations they weren't yeah um I mean I've been very lucky that my parents are very supportive I think they really I didn't really give them an option because I just was not like gonna do anything else (laughs) so it was either you know you jump on or or you're just like not gonna be happy but but I was very lucky and um I think now just even though it is it isn't a very South Asian dominated genre but I kind of find that exciting um because I feel like I can bring something different to that genre um even though it's like so many different genres mixed as you said but But yeah, I think it's like nice that we get the opportunity to kind of blend the two worlds that we come from. I mean, my family's so Indian and South Asian and um, they're also so American. So it just like, it makes sense, you know? You're listening to Trust Me, I Know What I'm Doing. After a quick break, we'll come back to our conversation with singer, songwriter, and guitarist, Samika. 
Stay tuned. Conversation. It's the antidote to apathy and the catalyst for relationships. I'm Abhay Dandekar, and I share conversations with global Indians and South Asians, so everyone can say, trust me, I know what I'm doing. New episodes weekly, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Hi, my name is Richa Morjani, and you're listening to Trust Me, I Know What I'm Doing with Abhay Dandekar. Welcome back to Trust Me, I Know What I'm Doing. Let's rejoin our conversation now with music artist Samika. You know, when if you think about it, growing up with a lot of music and dance in your house, some of this obviously has expressed itself through your mm-hmm. music. And, you know, it's hard not to have that kind of authentic flavor and, and almost a gene um, as it sort of comes out, you know, for you. Do, do you remember if there was sort of a bridge moment um, connecting the dots of that artistic background and how you grew up to now the sort of work as a songwriter and as a musician? Um, I don't think there was one pivotal moment. I think it was definitely a very graceful entrance into the music I was writing. So I definitely started um, writing very much English music and I was also listening to like Arjit Singh and like watching all these Bollywood movies and stuff that we all did growing up. And yeah. I, um, I just, I remember actually now that I think about it, that I wrote one song in Hindi and huh. I think I was, I don't know, it was like when I had first moved to LA and like, I didn't show it to anybody. I don't even think I showed it to my parents cause I was like, okay. this is probably like not even correct. Um, <laughs> But I think that that's all. That's always the fear backdrop, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, I was like, I definitely like made up some words here, but you know, it's fine. Nobody right. needs to know. Um, but yeah, it was definitely a, a very a organic kind of blend that was naturally coming out over the years of me writing and just thinking of different ways to write. You know, it's it's fun to kind of trick your brain into trying something new and then. You, yeah. ne- you never know if it could be an epic fail as that song that I first wrote was, or it could be something that, you know, it would be, it'd you, be okay. To you share. never know. There might be a moment one day, like, you know, from the vault, archived I know. somewhere oh for Samika, right? There, um, yeah. Well, and, yeah. and in that same sort of spirit, <laughs> are there are there perhaps more subtle ways that your cultural background manifests in your work, whether it's in the writing, whether it's in the sort of way that you approach pep- preparation or practice, mm-hmm. are, are there some of those that you reflect on now uh, in, in thinking about maybe not the ways that necessarily come across in the music? Yeah, I think also the way that I, because ultimately as an artist, you are portraying yourself to the world in a certain way, whether it yeah. be via music, singing, or even just fashion, or like how you, especially on social media, how you present yourself. Um, yeah. I think I definitely have posted things that are very cultural and I don't know, I think like just my overall sharing myself to the world is very blended. Yeah. And I'm sure like, I I don't know like a pinpoint, how to pinpoint something, but there's definitely how I, you know, just express myself all over the place is very cultural. Yeah. There's nuggets all over the place. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's really cool that we're all, and like you too, like I'm sure there's just like so many little things that you don't even realize like how like Indian you are and you're like, Oh my God, where did that come from? Yeah. Right. (laughs) There's, there's like, uh, I mean, I'm drinking some chai right now. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) I I don't know why I'm drinking it. I could, I could have anything else or, or, I mean, that's a little more obvious, but yeah, it could be like, you know, the expressions or Everyone gets on me because I always say that I'm I'm never I never say that I'm turning off the lights. I'm always say I'm closing the lights, which is just oh my God. the worst ever. You're one of those. I'm one of those, right? <laughs> um, I, I have to tell you. So I I loved Laurel Canyon, and thank you. I, yeah, and and part of it, you know, in thinking about it, was obviously kind of the the title reminds me, particularly growing up in and around L.A of this kind of collective experience that people share. And 
it mm-hmm. seems like for you this it was a collection of sort of love letters to the LA experience, especially as mm-hmm. an adult who's there. Yeah, is that is that sort of description a collection of love letters? Is that just way too simple? I mean, is it far more complex when you think about it from the lens of being the person who created that music? Um, no, I kind of love that. I think that's really a really cute way to say it, and I think it's very true. Um, a lot of the song, I mean, all of the songs I made in LA, you know, all over the place. And it was just, I would drive through Laurel Canyon to go to my sessions. And right. it just, it was a very homage in kind of like a romanticizing it way. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, I think I, I would definitely describe it as a little love letter to LA. Yeah. Is romanticizing it part of the experience as an artist who is oh yeah you know is, is it is that important um in, in a way uh or it has the reality of that sort of struggle that grind of going oh, through the industry true you know is that is there some balance to that um for me i feel like you just have to be so delusional <laughs> like people talk about it all the time but you you really have to like have some you have to romanticize your life. You just yeah. do. And, yeah. <laughs> and um, if you don't, it just, it's not exciting, you know, like right. reality can kind of suck. And so it's fun to heighten everything. And, and it depends like which way, I mean, a lot of artists heighten things to like the negative way. And sure. I definitely have gone through my fair share of doing that. But yeah. at least at this moment, it was heightening the, the really fun romantic side of just yeah. life. And um and yeah, I I love doing that, and it's a, it definitely came through in the in the songs that I was writing. Your latest single, until then, talks a little bit more about like loss and and mm-hmm. love and and kind of relationships and and almost like yearning in that mm-hmm. way. Is that also a mood? I mean, just like you ha- have this great, creative, playful, romanticized music, is this mood of kind of loss and yearning? Is that one that you find some almost empowerment in creating music around that? Yeah, I think um, for me, writing about your personal experiences and all the drama of life and getting that down in a song is really, I think that's where the therapy side comes from, where you can really, you have opportunity to create something great out of such a sad situation. Yeah. Um, And my first project that I put out Call Me, which was uh, also made in LA, but that was definitely more on the line of like, oh, I'm just like a very sad human. <laughs> like these are really sad songs, but I put yeah. it out and I was the happiest person ever. Yeah. You know, so it's it's really funny, just classic ups and downs of life. But but yeah. I'm curious as you've gone through this and you mentioned how much, how comfortable you are performing and, and mm-hmm. how much sort of like having the guitar in your hands and and being able to be up on stage. When you started in this um, business uh, compared to now, would you say that some of your kind of tendencies towards introversion or extroversion have at all changed? Um, Completely, yes. (laughs) Yeah. And they're still changing. So um, yeah, my, the last year I was performing in LA, I think like twice a month or something. And just and again like that's my favorite part so I was I loved doing it even though I was losing so much money I really didn't care it was just like I must be on stage and have to sing these songs that nobody knows and just for me you know yeah but when I first started it's it was definitely a more reserved kind of performance I think uh, my hardest part was really talking on stage. I could always sing, um, but just like talking to people about things is more difficult than hmm. I think people realize. Yeah. And um, so that was something that I was like, oh, I should I should probably, you know, like explain what I'm doing on stage. And um, I just performed a few weeks ago and that was the first time that I really tried to connect with the audience so it's it's like very much a a learning experience but it's definitely something that i feel like i've grown yeah and i'm still growing going through do do you enjoy those kind just like 
you know, there's perfecting the craft and, and discovering new parts of that craft. Do you, do you enjoy these kind of works in progress, especially yeah. when it comes to performance? Yeah. I mean, um, I, yeah, you definitely have to look back and, and think about how the previous you would have, if they could watch you now, you know, and it's, yeah. it's cute. It's a cute thing to think about. And, um, yeah, you have to you have to enjoy the growth. Otherwise, what's the point? <laughs> well, because, you know, <laughs> some people would say, wow, you know, I I really struggled with with that sort of talking to the audience part. And they mm -hmm. would say, forget it. That's that. I'm never doing that again. Yeah. And, you know, like it's easy to in some ways kind of blockade that or shy away from it altogether. Mm hmm. It is. Um, I just want to be the best artist that I possibly can be. And I think as an artist, you have to keep evolving and keep growing yeah. and it, it makes it so much more exciting when you get better. I mean, anything you get better at is, is exciting. Sure. So. You're listening to Trust Me, I Know What I'm Doing. After a real quick break, we'll come back to our conversation with Samika. Stay tuned. Every story told is a lesson learned and every lesson learned is a story waiting to be told. I'm Abhay Dandekar, and I share conversations with global Indians and South Asians so everyone can say, trust me, I know what I'm doing. New episodes weekly, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Hello, everyone. My name is Tam France, and you are listening to Trust Me, I Know What I'm Doing. Hi there, I'm Abhay Dandekar, and you're listening to Trust Me, I Know What I'm Doing. Let's rejoin our conversation now with singer, songwriter, and music artist, Samika. You know, in looking at the, you know, Laurel Canyon EP, I was thinking of Another Life and, and Last Lover and Strangers at Heart. I mean, it's such a lovely collection. And then I'm particularly thinking of the, of the lyrics in Red Ferrari, where you're talking about, you never play by the rules, and I've been waiting for a ride and sort of always played by the book. And, and it occurred to me, is this, is that song, is this EP sort of a metaphor for your own journey in a way? Definitely. Yeah. I think um, just kind of what we were talking about before, like Red Ferrari, it starts off as just being very reserved and very you know playing by the rules and at the end you're just you know you stole a ferrari who you know who does that <laughs> you don't have to have the guts to do that yeah um but it definitely is about the evolution and just growing as a person and taking risks and yeah um enjoying the little things in life or the big ones so you know walking down the street and sort of like jumping in and stealing a ferrari it's almost like a surreal uh you know kind of fantasy oh, right yeah. <laughs> and, and is has is this been is that kind of how you view the success or even the the joy of this journey that you have? Yeah, why not? I think like, you know, you got to reach for the best. So yeah. And yeah. last but not least even with thinking about that, is that the kind of empowerment that artists in some ways in your opinion sort of like need to have? Like you kind of need to be daring and bold and mm -hmm. find a fantasy to almost like latch on to. Yes, you do. Um, I think music itself is always inspiring, at least for me, the most inspiring thing about when I want to write is I'll listen to music and yeah. be like, oh, I love, you know, feeling like this, like I want to make people feel something too. And it's like, it's very cool that as an artist, you have the power to do that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's, it's important to take risks and just enjoy your journey and connect with people. Yeah, connecting with people is definitely the main thing for me. Imagine that you found yourself somehow in a room with your grandmothers, who were both singers. What, what would you want to share with them if they were listening to your music for the first time? Well, my nani is actually a singer, and my daddy, so yeah, they're both singers. And um, I think for, for me, I actually got... I'm very lucky that I was able to, you know, show my nanny so I know exactly what the reaction was. Yeah, so I'm curious. And, uh, like, what was yeah. that? What was that like? 
So I remember the first song I ever showed my buddy mama was my song Call Me because that was the first song that I, I had ever put out. And um, she listened to it and she was really the one who taught me and my sister how to sing. Um, and we always looked up to her for the music inspiration. And she told me that, you know, like, wow, your your voice is really healing. Like, I, mm -hmm. I, the music that you write is very healing. Yeah. And um, I don't know, anything like nice that your grandparents say, just <laughs> feel it's such a blessing. And so, um, yeah, I actually really remember that moment. Yeah. That's a cool question. Do you think about do you think about that when you're when you have like a final product? I mean, like there there is some element of, you know what, whatever I make that's out there doesn't really matter, like who likes it, who doesn't like it. But I imagine that there is some very much a sense of pride when your family, especially, you know, your grandmothers who, who mm -hmm. were singers, must appreciate and enjoy that and give you that feedback. Yeah. Um for me, I feel like I don't I'm not afraid to show strangers my music is definitely more fear of showing my family <laughs> because <laughs> my dad always says he's my number one fan but also my number one critic and right. I'm like but but right. you could just be the fan right <laughs> it's okay <laughs> you don't have to do that I don't yeah. but it but no it's it's a good thing that he does that um sure but yeah it, it's definitely I think a better feeling when my family likes my music and they've definitely told me when they didn't it's like yeah. oh, okay i guess i'll good double times. think that one right yeah we love that <laughs> um but no it's good i mean i think because they're so honest that sure. it is the only opinion that i really care about and um I, I definitely run through like my sister i send her all my songs before i even think about putting them out yeah. you know as demos and stuff and she'll she's brutal too but in the best way so, so not as brutal recently as she was in the past so good, good. i think there's some improvement there <laughs> we, we know where the final edits come from then um yes you know exactly so AP credits yes um what's coming up now for you i mean you have some great projects uh uh coming up what's on the horizon um so i'm actually going back to nashville um, funny enough, even though I just got back, I'm going back. I just have so many songs that I have written out that um, I want to get produced. So I'm going to go produce another four or five songs. And I think just this year for me is really about releasing all the songs that I was uh, performing last year. So a lot of people in LA have already heard the songs. And yeah. so they keep asking like, when is this going to come out? And I never have an answer, but now I feel like I do. I'm closer to it. So yeah, just a lot of more, a lot more music um, is coming out. I'm curious uh, on sort of a global stage, have you had fans or listeners or audience participants sort of reach out from India and share yeah. what their thoughts are about your music? Definitely. I mean, I never, I was always a little confused about India just because I didn't know, again, like I'm not a Bollywood singer, you know, yeah. and obviously that's what our culture in India really thrives on as it should. It's so sure. great. Um, but yeah, I, surprisingly, I think a lot of people there, especially the younger generation is kind of because the world itself is so small now that yeah. they're just exposed to such different music. And, and um, I think like this whole indie genre is definitely crossing over. Um, yeah. So I have gotten a lot of messages actually from people from India that I would not have expected to. And it's nice. Yeah. Well, I know that so many are, enjoying your music and discovering your music and, and finding some terrific sense of joy uh, in appreciating it. Samika, thank you so much for joining us. What a treat. No, thank you. I hope we can do this again sometime. <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah, no, this was, this was so lovely and such great questions. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Samika. And please check out her music at samikamusic.com. And if you're enjoying Trust Me, I Know What I'm Doing, please help drop a kind rating and review wherever you're listening, and visit us at abhaydarndekar.com. Till next time, I'm Abhaydarndekar.